Hey, Al McCoy here, and you are listening to the Solar Panel, the Phoenix Sun Show. We appreciate you watching the Sun Solar Panel podcast. Uh, right here on YouTube, of course, we have Mr. Greg Esposito. Hola. Dave King. And uh, no lie, I <laughs> I was really inspired by a bunch of other Suns podcasts this weekend because I'm like, man, every single other Suns podcast is bringing on a guest of another Suns podcast, and I didn't want to be left out. So the first name that popped in my head was definitely Justin with Fanning the Flames. Justin, welcome on. Woo-hoo! I just had to do a wave thing too. Thank you very much. And I'm I'm. It's an honor that I'm the first name that pops into your head. And I don't know actually if that's a good thing or a bad thing now that I think about it, but I'll just I'll go with honor for now. So you were actually you were actually the only one that said yes. We <laughs> asked everybody else. We're sorry. <laughs> that is actually not true. Desperate Justin. desperate times do call for desperate measures. So hey. We needed some optimism on this show, actually. Well, well, I don't I don't know if you guys heard yet, but we went with the complete opposite route and just pulled in a Denver Nugget fan for our last episode because we figured, hey. Maybe we can steal some of that mojo from the Nuggets and and apply it to our pod in the sun. I was just listening to that this morning. It's a very good episode. And so it, everybody it worked, watching work too. Everybody chances. watching on YouTube has to recognize and give props to Tim for his awesome new camera. Oh, look at this sweet. thing. It's all. <laughs> it looks so good. You look superimposed. Yeah, because what every what everybody was demanding was i really wish i could see tim in high definition i, I need <laughs> that, i need that sweet sweet tim <laughs> look man i was using a 20 dollar logitech mic uh webcam i should say and it just it felt like it was time to upgrade and this thing's sweet the background blacked out i think i'm gonna be set i feel i feel more attractive no it, it, well it, it I, I, let's not put that far let's <laughs> So you've always been super attractive, Tim. That's what I mean. I, I did see hashtag more Tim now trending on Twitter. So I, I guess it makes sense. Yeah. Uh, let me ask you guys a question. And I was listening to this last night. Uh, good old Brian Winhorst. He went on Arizona sports and he had a couple of pointed uh, answers when he was asked about the Phoenix Suns. And I, I thought it was interesting. And, and uh, frankly, I agreed with him. I don't know about you guys. He said, the Suns are not a well-run organization, a well-run <gasps> team. Surprise, surprise. What? And the reason why they aren't a well-run team is because Robert Sarvers, um, with a reputation, keeps him from being able to sign competent coaches, GMs, and players. You could have just stopped at Robert Sarver. He didn't need to <laughs> right. say anything else. We, we get it. It's like he's it's, been listening to this podcast. I think it's a combination, though. I think Robert Sarver has has uh, a lack of respect for experienced coaches and GMs, and so he doesn't make competitive uh, job offers or um, employment condition offers when they're in interviews. While at the same time, he has a terrible reputation for even if you got past the interview and talked yourself into wanting to join the Suns, he has a terrible reputation for not letting you do your job. So uh, it's it's uh, it's coming and going, man. And Robert Sarver, hopefully one of these days is going. The last experienced coach that he hired was Alvin Gentry. That was only under duress, right? Yeah, exactly. It was he was an interim. And then, and then they hired him. Because he was already on the, on the staff. Yeah, he and he got him cheap. ever brought in an experienced coach from another team or another uh, out no, from not already on his staff. And he has never, ever hired a GM who'd been a GM before. No, and he's not going to do it again. If I mean, think about it. All signs point to James Jones getting this job. What are another- the chances that Adam Silver is going to finally step in like he did with the Sixers? Slim to none. Can't you let me dream just for a second? Because because Hinky made it very clear that they were losing on purpose. The Suns are losing because of incompetence. It's they're different. They're losing because they're bad. <laughs> yeah, like like well, this is not no, some they're, glorified they're losing plan. Because the front office is incompetent, and that includes Ryan McDonough and the prior front office, but it also mostly includes Robert Sarver because this team has gone downhill since he took it over. But but they never stop teams from losing because of incompetence they stopped hinky and the six can't there be a first time for everything well uh, yeah you can dream buddy but it's not gonna happen you're gonna have to have some kind of situation like you had with the clippers back 
a, a handful of years ago, or or they're going to have to overtly, say, you know, uh, come out and say you we're losing on purpose too. We can do something like that. Yeah, yeah, no, no, thanks. I'm good. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even <laughs> touching that. All right, I'm not <laughs> yeah, touching. Well, I'm not touching. That thigh would have game, saved Robert okay? Kraft too. <laughs> I don't think the problem was him touching. It was the other way around, right? <laughs> but I'm gonna I'm gonna stop right there. Actually, yeah, we should. I don't get I don't. I'll get myself in trouble. I don't get else in trouble. Um. Well, with with the whole Sarver thing, yeah, absolutely. Obviously, the reputation is there, and that's one reason why I'm actually perhaps relegating myself, but at least convincing myself that James Jones as a GM is not a bad idea because of the relationship that he has with players throughout the league. And could perhaps start to rebuild the reputation or repair that reputation as best that he can by putting a guy in charge, ostensibly in charge, who has a good reputation, is well respected and can perhaps start turning around that perception of the organization um, when it comes to how players, agents, other teams, the general public look at them. Yeah, I mean, that's possible as long as the rest of the front office can can be a little bit more sound. I mean, I would love to have James Jones stay around, and I'm not ever suggesting that James Jones actually get fired. All I'm suggesting is that somebody who knows what they're doing is a little bit above James Jones, between James Jones and Robert Sarver. I think James Jones would be great as a director of player personnel type. I mean, I've never quite understood all the basketball titles, but if you think about it intuitively – that sounds like a kind of guy that that James Jones should be, the guy who is the player relations guy, the guy who is involved in the negotiations and the signings and stuff like that, but isn't the final say. Well, to be uh, fair, we don't really know <clears throat> what he he uh, can and, 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 and can't do as a GM yet, right? I mean, we did see him at least uh, approach the point guard situation. What? Well, we know are he's we, so. Far. Are we calling Tyler Johnson approaching the point guard? He traded for a twenty million dollars shooting guard. That's not approaching the. Yeah, point that's guard like position. that's like wanting to buy a Ferrari and you approached the you know the car lot, but then went across the street to get the Yugo. But look at what he did it with. I mean, he did it with a guy in Ryan Anderson that could not play, could not play for yeah. the Suns, let alone probably any other team in the league. And he he at least tried something. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, he tried something, and it cost him an additional four million for a guy that can't score the damn didn't basketball. Cost him a dime. Uh, oh, well, that's true. It cost so Robert. I do have Sarver. a question though, and I, if I had any connections anymore with the front office, I would be able to ask this, but I, I don't have anyone I have um, any kind of connection with right now. But it would be nice to know if I think Wayne Ellington signed for the uh, rest of the season for about the same money the Suns had committed, and as long as a player resigns with another team. That salary is discounted from what you owe as far as cash anyway. Maybe not salary cap, but cash. So I don't think the Suns actually spent much extra money to get Wayne Ellington. I think James Jones has has established two things as GM so far. One thing is that he is a player's GM, and players will like that, and player agents will like that. Uh, there was just an article earlier this week. I forget who wrote it. Please uh, uh, forgive me. But um, someone wrote about how Sean Marks is seen as a player's GM as well because of how they treat how they've treated free agency and 10 day contracts and two ways and all that for their players and, and met promises and stuff. And I'm hoping that someday the way the Suns have handled these buyouts and these, these waivers uh, will be seen favorably by by agents in more than just a get him on the team so the Suns will pay a salary way, but also that he's been treated fairly. And and I'm hoping <clears throat> I'm hoping that will be a that that's one of the things that James Jones will be known for. And I'm hoping that another thing he's known for is that he actually has a pattern of acquiring players who are um beyond their rookie deal, but not so old that they're going downhill. So so far, and I know Greg, you don't uh want to give him any credit for Kelly Oubre, but uh they did acquire since he's been around a twenty three year old and a twenty six year old who are in the primes of their NBA careers um and so at least he's not signing over the hill guys anymore or uh wanting to draft 19 year olds anymore no look i can i, I can give him credit for bringing kelly Ubre and he definitely did i just don't want to act like some people that it was a stroke of genius that he ha crafted this brilliant thing 
it was it was a necessity after the original deal fell apart. But to your point, in both of those deals, he wanted to bring in guys uh, like that. Uh, Ofer Johnson, I don't know that I'm gonna gonna oh, be <laughs> be too excited about about that acquisition. We'll see if he if things change there. But to your other point. Uh, I certainly want to see a basket. If if you're going to keep James Jones, please bring in a basketball uh, president of basketball operations that has experience uh, in this league running and building front offices. James Jones may be a very good general manager in dealing with other GMs, dealing with player relations, but I, and I think we've seen uh, he's not going to have that experience in building a front office, building a scouting staff, doing those kind of things. I want to see an experienced guy. Uh, we've talked about Dave Griffin. It's a pie in the sky thing. But if you want to go a long way to to rebuilding your reputation, showing you care about the past of the Suns uh, and your past, the whole I don't want anything to do with Colangelo guys, bring Bring Griff home. You know, I don't think it'll ever happen, but that's one way to to do that. Or, or you know, and this I think may that's not a great be a great idea, Greg. I wish I would have had that. Idea. Well, no, I'm, I'm. Like, you, well. you did have that, and so did about everybody else that has any <laughs> sense of the history Only of the about Suns. About ten million people. Yeah. You know, but I, I war. You know, and this may not be a popular name, but a guy like a Kevin McHale. Like he's been there, he's done that. He's been a coach. He's been uh, a, a GM. He has Running championships. Operations? Yeah, he has championship experience. That could go a long way with James Jones and a Kevin McHale. That uh, and there's been some rumors that the Suns have been interested in him. That that could be an interesting combination. Just something to give me some some hope that this isn't the same thing playing out again, where you hire an inexperienced GM uh, that that is somewhat beholden to Sarver, and we go through the same pattern again. Justin, I, I mean, I, 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 I get the idea of bringing in a an, an a more experienced uh, uh, GM, somebody above James Jones, to kind of run things and let James Jones deal with the player personnel and the relationship thing. But I also think, you know, to Tim's point, James Jones, we haven't really seen what he can do, but the moves that he has made have made sense. Uh, and like you said, Dave, I'm I'm all in on the idea of let's rebuild this reputation. I was fine with the Tyson Chandler buyout, for example. I know a lot of people were like, well, that was a you know wink wink thing with you know LeBron to let Tyson go back to L.A. But hey, you know what? It shows some goodwill on 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 the part of James Jones and thereby on the part of the Suns. And it's going to be one of those step by step. You gotta you gotta build it back brick by brick, and it's little things like that. So I wouldn't be uh, you know against bringing somebody in with more experience. But like I said, maybe it's maybe it's my optimism, but or maybe it's me just relegating myself to where we are. But if it's ultimately at the end of the day, James Jones stepping in that position, I, I'm going to be fine with it too. So it is that part of sorry, the- Espo. Where <laughs> you uh, thank Alyssa for supporting the show, and if you are listening right now, and you want to support the show, you can do so. Uh, it's really easy. There's a one dollar a month option, a five dollar a month option, ten dollar a month option. If you do the ten dollar a month option, I personally will send you some swag. Um, you do have to let me know your address though, because it does not tell us that. So you have to hit us up on the Twitter or the Facebook. Uh, Give us your address, and I'll send that out. And this week, we do want to thank uh, one of our $10 donors, Matthew Van Hoos, for supporting Van Hoos. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you very much. We appreciate the support. Uh, We need to be able to, you know, keep doing this all the way through the awful times so that we can enjoy it when the Suns finally get good again. Yeah, without your support, Tim would not be able to look so good on a new (laughs) webcam, and we appreciate it. Uh, but in all seriousness, Matthew, I do need your address so I can send you that swag. So go ahead and uh, uh, hit us up on Twitter or Facebook. Give me your address. I'll send it out next week. But if you are listening to the show right now, you want to support. If you're on YouTube, uh, just look in the, the show notes below. Your podcast app, look in the show notes below. There's a button that says support this podcast. And that's the easiest way to do it. Now, <clears throat> Igor, we came back from uh, the All-Star break. I don't know about you guys. It was really nice for me. I needed a break from Suns basketball. and uh, But I was ready for it when when they were going to play again. I thought, you know what? The Suns are playing a shitty team. We're going up against the Cavs. Uh, they do have Kevin Love, but everything else on their team is garbage. It should actually be pretty good. Lo and behold, the Suns found a way to lose by 15 or so. Uh, pretty uncompetitive game, especially in the second half. Uh, some <clears throat> of... Uh, 
Suns fan base were calling on Igor saying, why the hell are you starting Josh Jackson against Kevin Love? And then it's kind of led to uh, people saying, is Igor a one and done coach? Oh, I, you know, we've had a five, 10 year break from real Suns basketball. So the all-star break didn't help me much, but uh, the, to me, who else is he going to start at power forward? It's not like they have some great actual power forward that they could have started against Kevin Love. It was you were going to start Mikhail Bridges or Josh Jackson. Like that's right. not or Kelly uh, Oubre. It, it, yeah, like it's it's not like you well, had. There would have been the other option. Who would have? <laughs> who? 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 Bender? Who? They, he didn't. Who? He didn't play Bender for a little while, and I think it's all Troy no. Daniels in there. <clears throat> Look, uh, I think the reason he's he's playing Josh Jackson is because Josh is the only one who's like, yeah, cool. I'll take it. I can do this. You know, he, he's the only one who thinks he's bigger than he really is. Uh, and uh, I think, I think that's the only reason that, and that's, he's found his way of starting the rest of the season is by being the only dude who thinks he's big enough to be a power forward when he wants to be, even though he's only averaging four rebounds a game uh, and he can't box out. He doesn't have the stones or anything like that for, for boxing out, but at least he doesn't go out there and say, oh, I can't believe I'm playing point guard or uh, power forward, excuse me. Um, and so that's why Josh is getting those minutes at power forward. Frankly, Igor has no other options. You yeah. really can't play Dragon Bender. You really can't. Dragon doesn't do anything out there other than stand around. And you've already got a DeAndre Ayton who has effort issues. Dragon has paralysis analysis issues. Uh, where he just can't uh, move fluidly. Kelly Oubre and Mikel Bridges just don't have the mentality to play against the bigger guys, but guys bigger than them, and and be banged all game like that against uh, you know uh, trying to box out and stuff like that. Josh is the only one who has zero, who gives zero fucks and just goes out there and just tries to do whatever he can. So you know, kudos to Josh to find for finding a way to start the rest of the season. I think you just gave Josh Jackson his new nickname. Zero fucks, Josh Jackson. I love <laughs> he it. He literally is. Don't you think he would like that kind of nickname? Oh, I think, I he, think would. he would love that. I, you know, <clears throat> did, Josh Zero Fucks Jackson. Like, I really, you're you're totally right. What do, uh, what is Igor supposed to do in any of these situations? He has no op- true option at point guard. He has no true option at power forward. Now, I understand the mentality that something has to change, right? I, there's no doubt that, that something has to change going into next year because this has been an unpalatable situation. But is that something Igor? Do we really know what he's capable of when you hire an offensive genius, uh, what people quoted as an offensive genius that runs complex systems, and then yeah. you give him absolutely no point guard to execute those things? You put him in a position to fail uh, from the get-go, and you know that's part on Ryan McDonough and part on James Jones, because James Jones inherited the situation but has had just as long to fix the situation. <clears throat> I think it's 90% uh, so. McDonough. I I won't and necessarily Sarver. argue I mean, about that. So apparently has influenced a lot of the moves uh, that McDonough made, but uh, James Jones has done almost nothing to create the roster that's here. So, uh, but I mean, but he did have the opportunity to attempt to fix it and, and at least put some kind of band aid on it to give Igor more of a chance. But, yeah. but the problem is, I see both sides of this because you have seen uh, these guys not give any effort on certain nights and that and i know igor says you don't coach effort but that's on the coach i'm sorry you have to have these guys ready yeah no that's a very good point also that the guys still don't look cohesive they don't look like they know the plays they're not executing well you watch other basketball games and you see teams actually going uh, about 30 percent faster um, harder in their offense even in half court settings on passes and cuts and all that than the suns the suns are still feeling their way out as if they just started training camp well, that's got to be on the coach too on the court the players will be like no you go here they shouldn't be doing that but they right. apparently igor's dumbed down the system too like so what does that say he's o- oversimplified this they still can't get it at, at what point are we worried that that they don't have the right level of, of basketball minds on the court, too, if they can't figure out well, they're, a simple Because they're all 22 and under. I mean, it, yeah. you know what, though? So they didn't, okay, run, they didn't run plays in high school and college? We, 
We have all been fans for a long time of this Phoenix Suns team. I clearly remember Alvin Gentry dumbing down his defense and in some cases his offense post Nash. He only had half a year post Nash, but um, dumbing down in November, December. I remember Jeff Hornacek dumbing down. I remember Lindsey Hunter. Well, no, never mind. I remember Earl Watson. He never really smarted up and then um jay triano had to dumb down things too every coach so what is that what does that mean Uh, phoenix like every other team in the nba can be better than at remembering plays than the suns and they come to the suns and look terrible look at tyler johnson so kelly Oubre the other day said he had had a conversation with kelly johnson after the trade tyler from miami which brought sorry with tyler johnson ah dang it why do i have this problem Kelly Johnson was an old catcher for the Diamondbacks, wasn't he? I know. Maybe that's it. Maybe I had some affinity for Kelly Johnson, the catcher of the Diamondbacks. But because I'm sorry. Recording at 7 a.m. Your time. No, because I made this mistake even in my own freaking um, tweets and stuff before, too. I'm sorry, Tyler. Tyler Johnson. Anyway, Kelly Oubre had a conversation with Tyler Johnson after the trade, and Tyler said that, the, yeah, the Suns rep around the league – is that all you got to do is play hard for 48 minutes because at some point they'll fold to beat the Suns. Well, it's true. <laughs> it is true. And, you know, you watch them against Cleveland. Then you watch them against Golden State. They bust their butts, but they know they're going to lose to Golden State by 10 to 15 points. And guess what? They made it so that they would lose to the Cavaliers by 10 to 15 points. It's like this team's comfort level is to play just good enough to lose because that's all they know. And that's sad. And you've got to figure out how to break that. Is is Igor Igor's way to break that is to execute better. Which actually is probably not bad advice. Play so, better basketball and you win more games. Is that what you're saying? That's Dave? literally what he I, says. I like every pre and post game. He goes, Look, I know it's on me that we don't find enough touches for DeAndre. I know it's on me that we don't, their offense isn't isn't clicking. But at the same time, the players have to play. And if they play better, we'll win games. My my biggest concern with Igor is that is the motivational thing. It, it, it like you were saying, David. Why do the team? Why does the team come out? Some games bust their asses, play well. Other games just seem completely disinterested. And you know, I, I kind of I call it the the quarter the quarter of doom. The Suns always have that at least one quarter of doom where they just get destroyed and they find themselves trying to dig out of that hole. And sometimes they manage to do it. Most of the time, they don't. Um, but the motivation thing is is my biggest concern. And, and ultimately, I'm with Espo in terms of we don't really know what Kokoshkov is capable of. I think you said that, Espo, right? I don't know. But we know he can we know he can coach. I mean, he has a history of coaching. He won, you know, the European championship with Slovenia, whatever it is. So the, it's been the, a the national team coach there. for 10 years. Yeah. Right. The capabilities there, but it, it, it's just getting the right pieces there. For him to be able to use so he can uh, um, get the most out of the systems that he's running. And obviously this season he hasn't had an opportunity to do that. And I think, you know, for that reason alone, I I, I don't see any way that he's going to be gone. And then obviously Sarver's not going to want to pay him and then pay another coach. I think think the problem here is he may be a dead man walking because he wasn't James Jones' guy. If they go with another GM, he's not going to be that guy's. Uh, and he hasn't, and they haven't shown enough. Uh, they haven't even shown that they believe in this guy with the with the way that they play for him. Because he, I can be okay if you're losing and and you're not a great team, but you're fighting, right? You're you're fighting to try to win games. You're but they you're do showing fight it effort. sometimes. They just don't fight every time. And and here's the I think I think the problem is, and I haven't been in the huddles. I know, surprising. Um, I haven't been in the huddles. I haven't not been yet. in practices. Um, but man, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, I think the problem is that Igor literally as Josh Jackson gives zero fucks on the court as a player, I think Igor gives zero fucks about motivating guys. He wants to, them to execute. He, he's an X's and O's guy. He's a skills guy. He's a, this is what you need to do to be successful. Now go out and do it. And he just rolls them out on the court and he does not really think it's his job to fire guys up and get them hopping and jumping and, and totally excited. And it's not his job to stop a bad run other than call a timeout and give them something to execute. I just don't think he thinks that's his job. 
Okay, well, if it's not his job, then hire somebody on the staff that it is. I mean, we heard Sean McVay of the L.A. Rams has a coach that his pretty much sole purpose is to pull him back when he runs on the field during the game. So I want an Igor motivation coach. Let's just hire Tim Robbins, right? Right, right? Yeah. to just to just to motivate these guys and get in their face and and get them going, right? Or Gary V. His know? only job is to run up behind Igor as he stands there stoically during a bad time and just go up and super tickle him so he's got to jump and run. Or, or, <laughs> or hire kind of- Ellen Williams if his NBA career doesn't work out and put him on the coaching staff. What's that? I thought you said Kellen Olson. I was like, what? Oh, no. <laughs> Wait, no, what did you what did you say? Ellen Williams. <laughs> Oh, yeah. doesn't work out and then he can just be the cheerleader on the side but I feel like seriously Alan still wants to play he does he's he's definitely going to keep playing for a while uh, you know but seriously this this is what i mean a leader is supposed to understand what their uh, deficiencies are and hire people in positions to help make the entire group look better so if you don't believe <clears throat> that you can be the motivator in chief you hire a guy that can do that for or- you or James Jones hire helps him hire that guy. Yeah. I mean, really, this was Igor's first chance at building a uh, a coaching staff, and he's got some rookies and guys who haven't been lifelong coaches on that staff, um, and some of them are going to be really good, and some of them are not. And maybe Joe Prunty isn't your best lead guy, even though he's a good tactician himself. Maybe he's not the motivator you need. Maybe you need like a Tom Thibodeau type to be your lead assistant, like you're saying, Greg. Um, I think it'll be interesting if Igor does stick around how his coaching staff changes over the summer. Would any of you be disappointed next year or or this offseason if Igor was fired? Depends on who you hire. If you hire another first-time head coach. Without the hire. You just get the the notification Igor Kokoshkov has been let go by the Phoenix Suns. (sighs) If we're looking at it in a vacuum... I can't say I necessarily would. I I think it would be unfair to him because they put him in a position not to succeed and then ran him anyways. But as an Arizona Cardinals fan, I couldn't I couldn't be that upset that they let Steve Wilkes go after having such an awful, uh, you know, first season. And it's a very much a, a similar situation with uh with igor kukoshkov is they've they've fallen flat we didn't expect them to be a playoff team but we did not expect them to be the worst team in the league and the reality is that's where they are again so if they let him go there's not i can't really make an argument where i go well he did so much and they they let him go but i think he deserves the opportunity to uh to do more here with an actual roster and and i i think the team needs you know for better or worse, continu- continuity too. I mean, you have this carousel of coaching s- staffs that have been coming through over the past decade, give or take, and you've got a young core of players here. You've got a young budding star in Booker, and continuing this turnover is certainly not going to help uh, allow a coaching staff to maximize these players because every year they're going to have to learn a new system learn how to play in this new system, et cetera. And I mean, again, maybe it's me relegating myself to that idea, but ultimately I think continuity is important as well. And get a point, get a point guard in there and let Igor see what he can do when he actually has a serviceable yeah. um, uh, roster and he has players who have another year under their belt, maybe, maybe Aiton. Now that's the third or fourth or fifth time he's talked about, you know, taking over he's gonna actually do it uh and and see where things go from there look look robert sarver runs runs the suns like he's the joker from the dark knight right he's a believer in chaos right and and uh, he thinks that the thing about chaos is that it's fair like that's this organization has operated in a chaotic mode for 10 years now since since they decided to trade Steve Nash to the Lakers, this organization has been chaos. And even prior to that, when they let Steve Kerr walk, I mean, that that was a chaotic thing that they simply <clears throat> let him walk because because they didn't want to give his staff raises like this whole organization operates in chaos. And the most chaotic thing you could do again is fire Igor yeah. and give these young guys a, 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 you know, what would that, that'd be Josh Jackson's fourth head coach since he came in into the league in two, in two years. years. That's, 
that's the way that this that this likely that's plays out because that's the mo of this franchise. Right. I would be disappointed if either Igor or James Jones is fired. Um, I said that they should hire an experienced coach. I agree with you that they should um, hire better coaches, but put them on Igor's staff so you have some continuity. And I think, like we said earlier, you should hire somebody who's over and above James Jones, but not actually fire James Jones. I am I am ready for some continuity. I don't think James Jones in and of himself and Igor Kokoshkov in and of himself are the biggest problems. So how about fix the biggest problems first and see if those other problems become solutions? Well said. So you mean sell sell the team for one point six billion and fix the problem that way? Yeah, we should start a GoFundMe. Yeah, and we'll fall, them. we'll fall we'll fall one point six billion short. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but even but I have to like we said at the very beginning of this, um, I think we did that. Uh, Robert Sarver is no better than one of us, you know. As far as a fan, he just happens to have the money and he owns the team. We wouldn't be necessarily any better as as it's, owners either. No, that's not <laughs> true so because phone. I mean, come on, that that's What's not. That? He's still using a flip phone. I I feel like anybody that's still using a flip phone, legitimately still using it, we would be better. Don't Do you know that he really is still? Yes, using he is. I saw no, he is at the game. You, uh, we were at. You, he walked through. Yeah, but, but me... isn't that? Isn't that I, like? I, maybe I, it's a prop. No, it's I think not that's, a prop. I think that's functional. kind of a. I think that's kind of a badass move. If you ask me, I'm just saying. I, I I'm going to tell you this, Dave. <laughs> I. Maybe I think he's it's Captain Kirk and it's a communicator. Yeah, he can beam himself up somewhere. <laughs> Maybe he can beam himself to another planet and leave. It. <laughs> but honestly, don't. Don't give me this that any fan could wouldn't do as well. We'd actually care, and we care cares. about the organ. I'm not sure at this point. You know what? I, I I used to defend him because I thought he genuinely wanted to win and he genuinely cared. But anybody that does and sits here for a decade like this and can't learn that their own behavior is the biggest mistake in this entire thing and do something to correct that is it can't care that much and can't care about the fan base that much. And the difference if you or me or, or Justin or Tim uh, took over this team would be, we give a crap because we care about this. We don't care about just the dollar signs. And at this point, he got his $150 million from the city. The arena is going to be redone. The value of the franchise is going to increase. And at that point, leave, okay? At that point, walk away if this has always been about just increasing that $401 million investment. Uh, leave, because I don't want somebody running this franchise that genuinely doesn't care about the people like us that, that spend our own time, our free time, caring about watching and loving this franchise. And I'm at a point where, and I said this to family last night, I never thought I could potentially hate this organization, but they push me in that direction at times. And, and it hurts because it's like hate winding up hating your best friend that you grew up with and you guys grow apart because you have different views and you wind up having to walk away from them at some point. Now I don't want that. And I think a lot of fans feel that way. So I think everybody's on the same page with the Robert Sarver stuff. Uh, Deandre Ayton. Um, <laughs> he, he had basically said that uh, after the sun 16th straight loss, which uh, maybe someone knows is, is that a, a franchise record? Oh or yeah. I guess it's second year in a row. They've set a franchise record for straight losses. Great. Uh, he hey, was, at least they're setting records. <laughs> you're going to be bad. Be historically bad. <laughs> that he was going to take over. And I got to tell you, when I read that, I actually laughed. It, it, it's great to talk, right? Talk is cheap. Um, you know, and I DeAndre like Ayton means what? Well. Look, look, I've, I've been listening to DeAndre Ayton all year long. And here's the pattern. DeAndre Ayton has no idea because... He's 20, he's a kid, all this stuff. He really has no idea why they're losing. Neither does Josh Jackson. Neither does Devin Booker. Neither does any of these. They don't know why they're losing. So to say that they're going to come up with a solution for winning is is a fallacy right now. And that's the biggest problem with this team is that none of them actually know what sequence of events it will take to win games. All they know is I can do this and I can try harder at this. And hopefully that'll that'll come out and we'll be able to smile at the end of the game. DeAndre Ayton saying he's going to take over. I sure wish he would. 
I mean, effort wise, I wish he would, but he doesn't know what that looks like. He really doesn't. Yeah. But to be fair, uh, honestly, uh, Deandre Ayton being extremely involved in the second half of a game, what a novel concept. Maybe that actually would help you win. And I hope maybe he is at a point where he's sick of waiting and he's going to demand the ball and he's going to, uh, effectively insert yeah. himself in that <clears throat> offense in the second half of games. Now, I don't believe it because we haven't seen it, and the talk and the sentiment is nice, but I would love it. I would love it if he got so aggressive that he was getting in the face of a Tyler Johnson and a Devin Booker and saying, I need the ball, give me the ball, because that's the mentality this, you eventually need him to get to. This is Igor Kokoshkov in a nutshell. So Igor knows that DeAndre Aiden needs to be more involved for them to be successful. But Igor is requiring DeAndre Ayton to want to be more involved, to to insist on getting the ball, to force the issue by making himself available, by by engaging in the game and playing some defense before he's going to – he's not just going to hand um, an offense that, that centers around getting DeAndre Ayton the ball every single time in scoring position to a guy who isn't going to put the effort out. You know, I, I swear to God, um, Igor, if he had a better, like a better scorer in the team, he would be giving De uh, Devin Booker the same treatment. But Devin Booker is basically his only option with the ball. And so he can't, he has no choice but to let Devin Booker dominate. But that is not the kind of guy that Igor wants actually running his offense all the time. And if he had a better option, say they had someone like a, um, a Goran Dragic, uh, Eric Bledsoe even, any of those guys, he would actually have those guys with the ball more often. And De Devin Booker, he would be saying things like, he's got to demand the ball. He's got to play harder on defense. That's, that's the kind of coach Igor is. Whether that's a good motivator, whether that's successful or not, remains to be seen. But this is him in a nutshell. He's not just going to hand the keys to DeAndre Aiden unless DeAndre Aiden takes them. But that's a player development mentality, and I don't think there's it anything is. wrong with taking that with these young guys because I think DeAndre Ayton in the long run will be better for it. I think part of the problem with Devin Booker is he didn't have that early right. on. And and now – This is what we Aiton, get. Yeah. Right, exactly. Devin Booker had all the right attitude when he was younger. I mean, he's only 22 right now, but when he was 19 years old, 20 years old, he had all the right attitude. He wanted to do all the right things, but his coach didn't require him to. And now he's gotten really bad habits. And this year, unfortunately, Devin Booker has become the guy that all of his critics thought he was. And that's really sad for me as a Suns fan because a year ago, Devin Booker was better than this. A year ago, Devin Booker tried harder. Yeah, he wasn't good on defense, but um, that was that was another area he had to improve. But he, he at least had a lot more effort uh, out there than people were giving him credit for. And this year, he's basically been exactly the guy that his haters, his critics, have painted for three years. And that really depresses me. Well, so. Earl Watson did him a disservice. I mean, think about the the Celtics 70-point game. He did the opposite right. of what, what the demanding of Aiden. Yeah, Igor would never do anything <laughs> like that. Yeah, and I, I, I feel like Aiton needs to – he has to play with a chip on his shoulder. I mean, he has – Every physical tool, he has the capability. He just needs to play pissed off. And maybe he needs to go on Twitter and read what people talk about him and what they say about him. Maybe that'll get him going. Uh, but, you, you know, basketball pissed off? What? Have you ever played basketball pissed off? Yeah, you get angry, you don't start caring, and you just do what you do. Yeah. I, play, yeah. I played like Josh Jackson when I yeah, I, I would no just fucks. drive the lane and throw the ball everywhere. Yeah, it was good. No fucks. No fucks Jackson. Yeah. I think You're going to have to do a lot of ble bleeping of this episode. You know, best, best games of uh, basketball I've ever played is when I had a bunch of aggression uh, to take out. So I think to Justin's point, uh, uh -huh. if his home life is great, I think that maybe fans on, on uh, Sun's Twitter and different things need to start uh, harping on him, and maybe we can get him uh, engaged and have something to prove i got maybe. it better you, you need to get one of the fans to sleep with his girlfriend that'll do it good to go there's your mission fans uh, oh no it hasn't no. helped Devin booker this year <laughs> no no he slept with yeah. he slept with two women different other way around no but then we, started, we, we, decided we started to with insert himself we the started with situation. No pun intended. Um, we we start, sorry. <laughs> we we started with craft. Now we're going on to this. Yikes. Um, maybe maybe you know. In, in addition to getting this uh, a coach that's going to help with motivation, maybe just need somebody on staff that just talks talks crap to the players and gets them all angry. I'll do it. Yeah. 
Yeah, just yeah. Does, does the football stuff, going up and head butting him and stuff, and timeouts and punching him and, and shoving him in the chest back and yeah, that'd be good. You see, you see those. You see those YouTube videos of like the uh, strength and conditioning coaches at like Alabama who are just absolute psychopaths. We need one of those just running around the weight room, running around the practice facility, just yelling at guys. I love it in timeouts with the suit on, with the ill fitting suit on. <laughs> Start ripping it off. <laughs> I mean, when you watch the Suns games, it's it's really death by a thousand cuts with this team and why they're losing games. I, it's you can't point out one thing. You could say, well, we don't have a point guard, but then, you know, you can look at it and Devin Booker's running point, and that's actually, you can get away most of the game with that. Well, it's the defense. The defense is okay at sometimes. Well, it's this, it's that. It's it, They're losing in every facet of every way, every mm-hmm. single game. I, I don't even know what you fix at it's this point. It's kind of impressive if you, if you think about it. <laughs> the best you're ever going to see them play is when they're down 18 and they can cut it to seven. They are inspired. <laughs> But they're bad in every way. The only thing they're good at is is steals. And that's not even really a great stat to be good at because that probably means that you're gambling a little bit too much. They are gambling like crazy. Right. It's right. not a good it's not so a good outcome. At home we have the score the, the official scorer claim that they're down eighteen at the beginning of the game yeah. and the beginning of each quarter. And then they play like they have to cut that it to be, seven. That would right. be funny if it, like on opening tip, the score just changes to 18 <laughs> for the pro team <laughs> and zero for the Suns. They're terrible at closing out quarters. Uh, middle of quarters. The rotations aren't good. Uh, the, the, the nachos lineup. are cold. There's pickles <laughs> in them. Uh, what What did you guys think of? The parking is great, though, because no one goes to games. <laughs> hey, that's true. I, and I got tickets for like 10 bucks. Yeah. You know, so, and, and they were the, the third row. That's third the row secondary, secondary market tickets and parking is awesome right now. So you can't complain on that. But but Igor did make a starting lineup change. I don't think that we've talked about it yet, although I've gotten up a couple of times. He did insert Kelly Oubre into the starting lineup. Kelly Oubre played, I think, extremely well. He had, what, 23 points, efficient shooting, a block, a couple of steals, a couple of assists. He had a really nice stat line. Uh, Devin Booker in that same game with the Cavs, I think he was like 30 and 7. Not that it matters because it's empty stats at this point. But what did you guys think of Igor's uh, change in the starting lineup? Okay, you're um, shuffling deck chairs on the Titanic. Yep. There's mean, a, yeah, and and you need to shuffle ten chairs, and you only have really five with four legs on them. Yes, that's the problem. Is is and Igor's been saying this all year. You can't put all of your best players in the starting lineup because then you still have to play 48 minutes because those guys can only play together for 20 to 24 minutes without subs. So there's the problem. And guess what? The bench got beaten pretty badly in that game. Uh, Bridges knocked down from about 40 minutes to 20. I mean, that's a pretty big development if that stays for the rest of the season like that. Exaggerating a little bit. I mean, Bridges was in the high 20s and he went down to the low 20s. But I get what you're saying. He was the ninth man. And that's bad. He'll play play upwards of like 38, 39 minutes a lot of the time. This is what happens when when you have... 46 wing players, right? This is this is, one guy winds up as the odd man out when you shuffle a lineup. And, and Kelly how, Uber, and that's why I give Josh Jackson all the credit, man. He found himself a position to play so he can never be sat down. Yeah. He's I mean, a genius. He's like, Dibs, Dibs, I'll play it. <laughs> I wish he'd grow the fro back so he got those couple extra inches so you could argue that he is a power <laughs> forward. But, uh, but no, I mean, you look at it, Kelly Ubre deserves to be in the starting lineup. He, everything he's done is uh has shown that he deserves to be there so i have no problem with igor putting him there and i don't have a problem that he chose to put him in there uh over mikhail bridges and and not and leave josh jackson in the starting lineup so uh, i uh, but it is there's it's okay great you've you've made a change in the starting lineup but you basically have the same result because kelly Ubre and mikhail bridges uh, do a lot of the same things. I mean, Kelly Oubre is more your offense, uh, offensive minded, but they do a lot of the same things with hustle and defense and those things. So it's kind of a wash. So I, I don't have a uh, great. Okay, you made a change for for change sake. We were we were talking about the the shuffling of lineups on uh, fanning the flames at fan the flames NBA. Just throwing it out there. Um, mm-hmm. well, and I, uh, you know, really bad. What Why was is that? it? 
I haven't listened to the episode yet, but it's because it came out last night and I just didn't have time. And I thought to myself, I really need to listen to it before this episode so I can bring up something and sound like I, I, <clears throat> I do. And I was I listening thought, to it and I appreciate you bringing on your Nuggets fan, Bill. Why, hey. why do you why do you have it as NBA, though? Shouldn't it be Fanning the Flames, Suns? You, you're a Sun show. I mean, you're like these two jabronis and put NBA at the end of it just to feel more important. You know, Jabroni. frankly, what the hell yeah, I, 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 I never thought about it. It was all Paul's idea to change it, and I had I was like, sure, whatever, well, let's do it. And you know, so we came up with that really. So quickly. one of the I things I say, Greg, you're you're a former Suns employee, so I'm I'm not sure if you have the same perspective as we do. But if you call yourself Suns at the end, then it's like you're uh, you're saying you're affiliated with the team, and we are not affiliated with the team in any way. Oh, I actually, point, well, I you're not affiliated with the NBA as a league either. Let's make no, that very clear. No, but this is an NBA <laughs> account, is what we're saying. <laughs> No, seriously. Uh-huh. I mean, just just digressing for a moment. If I called, if I put Suns in my Twitter handle, that would look like I'm employed, or I wish I was employed, or I'm faking it. I'm I'm stunting, and I'm not. I don't uh, I don't have any affiliation with the Suns. I'm just a fan. And then by not having NBA, um, I had other Twitter accounts at the time, uh, personal ones, stuff like that. And so I needed to differentiate. So I put NBA on there. Plus, so followers would know that I am. And then um, on a oh, Dang, I lost my really job. bothered you, didn't it, Dave? I, I didn't Is mean that... to have us uh, go down this very weird rabbit hole. If we I want can to do go a down legal a... research on it to see if uh, there's any uh, liability if you use Suns in it, if you guys want me to. What I'll do is I'll change our handle to Fan the Flames, not employed by the Suns. Uh, that? Perfect. If we want to go down a rabbit hole, can we talk about why Justin is in a Barbie law office to record this uh, podcast? <laughs> yeah. I said a lot of pink. Nothing. Uh, I was first thinking Bratz doll. But yeah. First of all, pink's my favorite color. Okay. <laughs> Second of all, I have nothing else. That's it. I no. We had extra. We had extra curtains around the house, and I'm like, it gets and really like, bright in this room. Put up pink. You know what? <laughs> Every time Look, I come on this podcast, all I do is get down. I get less optimistic about the Suns. I can't take it anymore, guys. <laughs> is true, You're a man. fan this of the a... worst team in the league for the second straight year. Welcome to where everybody is. There's, I mean, there's, there's... Great, there's great doubling down on, on the pessimism. Thanks. Uh, I, I don't know. You don't deserve to feel good about yourself. We are seven <laughs> years into this. We are seven years into this goddamn rebuild. They're to eight. Is it eight? They're eight years into this rebuild. Hold the finger They're out of the still team. the worst Justin. team in the league. Just uh-huh. give it up, Justin. They they Look, actually this after this episode. I'm Justin. I'm gonna I'm gonna go curl up in a ball and cry for a while after this episode. I think there's they, a, they there's are... a reason Thanos is purple. All right. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> <laughs> Tim looks like he's lost. Disappear Tim... off this podcast. That would be Tim... awesome. Tim's like Tim's like three was a bad idea. He just looks like right now he's like I've lost all control. No, no, that's his usual look. <laughs> that's his usual look. Pretty soon he's, he's going to go out and get some coffee or something like that. No, I mean, to be honest with you, I'm still just really impressed by how great this webcam is. <laughs> <There's>... <laughs> Tim's, Tim's Greg... spending the entire time staring at himself. Yeah, the, this webcam is awesome. I, I I tried to get Greg to get it, but he's like, nah, blah, 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 blah. Dave, I know you want to do I said, nah, I want to feed my child instead of buy a webcam. I'm sorry. <laughs> Doesn't this webcam make you not seeing it? Now you want it even more, right? Oh, yes. I, I really, only if it makes me look like you. Can we get back to talking about the suns now? This is important. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this was way too optimistic for the moment, Tim. So can we get back to talking about something that's going to make us feel like we need to crawl up in a ball and cry? Sure. We're, going change, we're going to change our Twitter handle to at solar panel things that aren't about the suns. Because of the hey, way you know what really bothers me with a lot of the sun's commentary? And I'm not going to call out any particular uh, uh, speaking entity by name. But I am getting so goddamn tired of every single conversation being trade TJ Warren. I just am like, and all these other people that are saying trade TJ Warren, are the Suns going to trade TJ Warren? Stop it. If they were going to trade him, they were going to stop just like trying to speak things into existence for every trade that you want, just because you don't like TJ Warren. This team sucks. They suck with him. They suck without him. He's clearly not the problem. He might not be the solution, but he's not the damn problem. Yeah. Don't you know that that would also prohibit them from having a whole roster of just small forwards and shooting guards? Come on, they're By not trading, trading him. him. No, they would just trade him for another small forward. Oh, this is true. 
No, you're right. And why at this point? Okay, I get it. We could sit here and talk about trades, but none of that can happen for another three months. Like, and and we went round that bend way too many times about do you trade TJ Warren? Who do you trade? Which win for a point guard? And who are you going to trade? I have a new spot. Let's uh, trade oh. him for a point guard. Yeah, you could get him for Jeff Teague in the offseason. <laughs> you know, that's like the value. So just shut the fuck up with trading TJ Warren every single podcast episode, please. TJ Warren can't... for a point guard. I, I'm I'm intrigued. No, but seriously, <laughs> what, what happens? <laughs> a new thought. Back, what I happens? never thought about the, that before. The rotations, the, the lineups. Obviously, he's going to take someone's spot, either on the bench or starting, probably starting. Uh, what happens? Well, see, there's where Josh Jackson's um, uh, genius falls apart is because tj was the nominal power forward before he went down and it worked out so well i mean when you think (laughs) prototypical power forward in the nba you think tj warren you know when the suns did have a four game win streak in the middle of december against iffy teams but when they did it was tj warren at power forward d'anthony melton at point guard and a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. Hey, you know, um, if I remember, hey, they they found they no found Devin four nuts, Booker. four nuts. No, no Devin Booker. Yeah, there's eight of them on this podcast, but they found it's, four yeah. in December. Usually, that's a medical issue if you find four nuts. But anyway, <laughs> uh, yes, and they did not have Devin Booker. And I think I heard a stat, and I want to say uh, no, it was Devin Kellen. For some of them. No, they did not. Devin was out. They have not won a game, and I think this was Kellen Olsen oh, yeah. that, that had this stat yeah. since yeah. the day after Christmas with Devin Booker. Fifty, that I believe that's fifty-eight days now. That no the, wonder Devin Booker's sun, pissed off. Now, the now in, in, twelve points better without Devin Booker on the court. In in Booker's defense, in that hole, they haven't won a game with him since December twenty-sixth. They've only won two games in that time frame, so. <laughs> And they've been out about TJ Warren and DeAnthony Melton for some of those. And the sad thing is that DeAnthony Melton has been the best point guard since Eric Bledsoe was traded. And that's really sad because this is a combo guard who played only one year in USC as a freshman. At full strength, this team can win 25% of its games. Oh, ooh. <laughs> thank God. There's the optimism. There you go. Yes. It's a little optimistic even for me, I feel. <laughs> 25%, you know. It is. It is pretty. I did. I think I even wrote something like that this week. That yes, how low have we gone that we're dreaming of twenty five percent win percentages? I'm just honestly. Are is anybody else just hope just hoping they lose out? Just set like the oh, NBA's worst no. record ever. Oh, let's talk so, about this for a minute. Thirty eight straight games. Can we soul? Can we please talk about this for a minute? So the lottery odds have flattened. So the top, the worst four teams are within one and a half percent of each other in odds to get the top pick. The, the worst three teams have the same odds at 14 percent. The fourth worst team has the second best odds at 12 and a half percent. So what it's actually done, the league had intended for fewer teams to tank out the season trying to get the top pick. But what it's ended up as there's one or two more teams tanking and and, and not improving their rosters on purpose so that they can potentially be in the top four because they're all fairly equal in in options and there's almost no way the suns are going to drop out of the top four because i think it's uh atlanta now with 19 20 wins who who are the fourth worst there's absolutely no way the suns are going to overtake them because atlanta's not going to lose out for one thing and the suns aren't going to win 20 games for another so there's no point not winning as many games as you can with this roster at a 25% win rate, like Tim says. No, Greg, sh- stop. I'm um, not suggesting so, they lose on sh- Greg, purpose. Greg, I'm- sh- <laughs> sh- so uh, there are, there are, there's almost no way the Suns can get out of that top four. They really need to finish this season on a positive note, and they have to win as many games as possible to do it. And they can't be having TJ Warren have these mysterious injuries sitting out for a month. Um, we know what kind of mysterious injuries he's had in the past that were not um, uh, definable by the team. And we're, I'm hoping there, this isn't another one of those. But eventually he will come back. Eventually D'Anthony Mountain will be healthy enough to play. And uh, the Suns will win five to seven more games this year at least. And I think they should shoot for as many as possible. Well, we'll probably now, Melton this week. I mean, they just recalled him from the G League. Yeah, so I'm I'm just praying. I, I wish they would have played him on Thursday night. Why didn't he play at all on Thursday night? You play Elliot Kobo for three minutes. 
Dave, I'll take a I'll take that bet. I don't think they win five to seven games the rest of the way. You want a Done. bet lunch or yes. a meal or anything? Yes. Can you ever get away from your young family? Uh, long enough for, to do for a meal? you, I for you I can, Dave. I, I I want I want in on that because we we talked about this too. How many son, games Suns are going to win the rest of the season? And I I think four is what we're looking at. Like that was that was what I thought and. I think I've been more than expressive about my level of optimism and how I am always hoping for the best. And that's literally the best that I could come up with. I believe in this so much that I will put this on the line as well. I will wear a Chicago Bulls 1993 championship shirt on the YouTube version of this podcast. If they win, uh, if, if they win more games, Five. this is what we need you okay. to do. If if you uh, if you lose, we need you to take. Who was that guy that was taking a picture walking out? The actor in the sun. Uh, oh shoot! Oh oh um, yeah, Jonah was, Hill. Jonah Hill. We need a lookalike Espo Jonah Hill picture, but in a Bulls jersey. Yes. No, I'll I'll do. I'll. Walking I'm not up, buying up. a. I'm not buying a, a Suns jersey, but I will do the Jonah Hill thing. Okay. If, okay. I, I I will do the same exact look. You. All right. What do I need to do if the Suns win fewer than five games the rest of the year? Same thing. You, you need. <laughs> I don't you need to take. Stuff. No, you need to take the NBA no, out Jonah of your Twitter thing. handle. Okay, I'll take the NBA out of my Twitter handle. No, if no, the Suns... you'll lose your, you'll lose your uh, blue check mark. Oh, you're yeah. right. That's that's right. You have to I change will? your. Yes, you will. If you, I'll just change it. my. Um, I'll just change my my name part of it to what? What do you want it to be? Espo is right. Espo was right. Change I'll your... change that. I'll change it to Espo was right. Okay, I'll do that. If I if the Suns don't win five games, I'll change my Twitter handle for the entire summer. No, I'll change my Twitter handle for a week. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Things just got interesting on this show. I think we went down the starter. Uh, All right. What's your so your prediction is for so uh, Justin? What are you going to do if the Suns win five games? Not come back on the show. That's what he's decided. He's not going to do. <laughs> um. Well, I, I if you're asking me to make up my own my own uh, requirement own for the bet, you know, I feel like that's probably not going to go well. <laughs> no, no, we're all better at punishing you I, know, I, as a as a parent. If you let the kid decide, and you actually let the kid decide, they'll actually give themselves a worse punishment than you might have. Mine do you anyway. Don't, you don't know my kids. <laughs> my, my kids be like, "Okay, Dad. Well, uh, you're. I, I guess. I guess my punishment will be you'll buy me something." Like, I guess shit, I was better at the guilt this, part. This went so. back. You have to come I'll back. On, yeah, I want you, you. You guys call it. You guys call it. You come back on the show for a draft preview episode, but you have to drape yourself in that purple or in that uh, pink curtain. It's oh. <laughs> done. Done. That's it. Pink that's not even a and, that's not even, and, that's not even, and a girl wig too. So no. totally eh. fit the. We don't need okay. the wig. We just need like some lipstick or something. Lipstick. I'd prefer no, the. No, you've got girls in the house, man. Hey. Oh, oh, there's 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 plenty of there's plenty of female accessories around the house <laughs> that I, I I could use. I, I I'm not gonna share what they are because I don't want to give you guys any ideas. But I'll do the pink. I'll I'll drape myself in that. I'll totally do that. Don't in fact, worry. that's not even a punishment for me. Don't worry. Nobody's been listening to this uh, this podcast for the last 10 minutes, so they'll, they won't be able to hold us to this. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to change my Twitter handle to Espo was right if they win fewer than five. But if they <gasps> win five or more, Espo is going to wear the do the Jonah Hill thing in a Bulls jersey. Out of an office building. I don't know. Right? In a Suns jersey. I, I will not. I can't. I'm not buying a Bulls jersey. Like I have access to the championship shirt okay, because fine. I'm, but that's, I will do the song. You're going to recreate the Jonah Hill thing, <laughs> and then <laughs> Justin is going to wear pink. And what's what's Tim? What are you? What's your prediction? I'm, for not, this, I'm not. I'm not betting on this man. Tim has to not Boo. use his good webcam for a week. Oh, dude, it's <laughs> for the dude. It is for the YouTube channel. Oh, and I love it. Tim's subscribe. like, I'm not going to do that bet. I will never do. I will never not use this webcam again. Tim's cool. haircut already looks like he lost a bet, so there's that. <laughs> oh, hey, it looks pretty hot. I, I like just, your hair. I like your hair. Just shave Tim. your head completely, Tim. It's if very, the Suns yeah. win five or more games, you know what it is? Is I had a, a I'm not cool anymore um, a thought this week, and I thought <laughs> just yeah, one. Yeah, I, I better go get a haircut that makes me look more hip. Hey. I'm just giving you a hard time because I love getting that look on your face. That is, I want to come through this webcam and <laughs> choke you. It's a fun look to get out of. And now we can see it clearer because your webcam. 
<laughs> hey, this is, by the way, our first our first full episode on uh, on the YouTube, which is pretty exciting, which means I have like no editing to do for the audio version of this podcast. And also we got to see Justin for, you know, an hour That's straight. Fun. And you can always follow him on Twitter at so says Jay and you can find his podcast anywhere podcasts are found. Um, Fanning the Flames. Great show. You and Paul do a wonderful job. We got to see Tim's family in the background as well. Do you and Paul need a third uh, third person? Because I'm always looking for a way out of this thing. So let me know, all right? I've been trying to uh, swing a trade of Paul for you for like two years, Espo. It's just not going through yet. I'm 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 in. The trade deadlines are <laughs> been vetoed by the league office. office. My agent, my agent said we can get this done. So, <laughs> oh, your agent is Rich Paul then? No, it's just me. I, I'm the agent too. So. All right, guys. Well, on that note, I think it was a fun episode. We'll be back next week. Hopefully, the Suns win a game. One. That'd be <laughs> nice. I predicted one of these three road games the Suns will win. I put that in my article the other day. Mm-hmm. I really I actually thought, didn't think yeah. they would beat Cleveland. I just didn't think it would be so disappointing to watch. I thought they'd beat Cleveland for sure. I thought they'd come out pissed. Phoenix is the new Cleveland. Yeah. And nobody Thanks. wants that. Thanks. All we need is our LeBron. <laughs> and so on that note, we'll see you guys next week. Hey.